Hi, this is Noah with Advice from Young Tradesman TV, and today's video is going to be a complete breakdown of my interior painting tools, sundries, everything I use. I'm going to show you how I break that gear down into phases, store it, use it. But since we're outside, I'm going to show you how it fits into the work van really well first. But before that, I want to give a quick thanks to the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association, for uh, helping support work like this for other contractors by other contractors. Uh, their mission is empowering and informing um, this, people within this industry and bettering it. That is the same as mine. So I appreciate their support for things like this. And without further ado, um, you're going to see once we go inside that my interior painting uh, systems break down into four main bins, the pretty backpack, and this warm tote. You need every, in Vermont, you can see we're surrounded by snow. You need everything that could freeze, tape, caulk, primers, to be able to easily come inside at night or into a client's house. This can't stay in the van. But basically, these four totes are the main thing. The van has empty space. You can do whatever you need to with that sprayer, big five gallon buckets, whatever. So up here, I have some extension poles, uh, disposables like masking plastic and rollers you know, extra festools and sanders and vacuum bags. Over here, these are just drop cloth totes. We have slippy ones and grippy ones and roller pans and a fire extinguisher for exterior season. And then if you come around here, This is where my tower light lives. I want it to be kind of safe so that nothing can go on it. Uh, four foot ladder and Festool Midi. A six foot step fits right up there. So that's how it breaks down into the van. And the next scene will be within a client's house on a job site where I just unpack everything and show you exactly what I carry. And there's a slightly redundant info because we didn't perfectly plan this one. So excuse it if, if uh, a little bit of that is redundant on the inside. This video is going to show my new organizational and inventory system that I'm setting up so that my future employees will be onboarded into a smooth and well-oiled machine. Uh, reason this is important, think about being uh, an employee on your first day, and a lot of you came up in the trades. Uh, you might have come into some very confusing situations where you were expected to know everything day one, and it was messy. It didn't feel good for everyone. It was a waste of time for a lot of people. So. Uh, what I'm trying to set up is just a way where there are the least amount of tools per task possible and everyone will know where they go because I want to make this very simple. And this actually did take a lot of intent to set up. As a mostly solo person, uh, my organizational system was very idiosyncratic and you know when I took on summer laborers I would watch how confusing it was as they just took a long time to, to really learn why I put things in certain places. And this is an effort to just get rid of that whole effect and make things very easy. So I've distilled the average interior repaint into four distinct phases that all live in these white bins. And then there are a few more extra uh, totes and pretty backpack here that have other sort of tools. Um, but what is the first thing we do when we get into a room, when we get into a residential repaint situation. It's pretty much the same every single time. Same thing for loading out. So we have a load in, load out box. This is red and on the top of it is every single thing that will stay in here and live only in here forever. So phase one, you know, we're bringing in drop cloth bins from the van. We're also bringing load in and the purdy backpack it's a bit of a catch-all. It has things that you can need for almost any phase, as well as disposables that live in the van, like masking or roller covers that we bring in every morning based on what we're doing that day. But just to demonstrate how granular I got, but also how easy this makes things, what do you do when you walk into a room? You're probably gonna move furniture around. If it's really heavy, you can use some furniture sliders, right? Then what are you doing? You are probably removing outlet covers, plates, Here's a little drill, okay? Where are you gonna put those things? We put them in bags. They get labeled with a Sharpie for each room. 
if there's a bunch of loose hardware, we keep some tape in here too. So you're really doing everything first out of one bag. Garbage bags, you're gonna set up a trash, right? You're gonna start producing it. We'd all know what happens if you don't have a place for it. It ends up everywhere. That's messy. What else are we doing? Roll on a ceiling. We're gonna be covering the bed. So I keep one hand masker in here for just running long sections of plastic over everything. And the masking plastic, again, party backpack, because that's the catch-all. Um, other little things, like how often do you have to take off those little annoying toilet paper things with the Allen wrench? Yeah, keep some Allen wrenches in here. The process is the exact opposite for loadout when you put the room back together, all the way down to the last detail of putting my little logo on each can so they never forget. So let's load in, load out. Super simple, super straightforward, right? But if you don't have a storage system, an organizational system that makes you go out of one place, you're gonna be in five. And these tools are really not used for anything else. If they are, I have redundancies in those other bins too, so that we're not bouncing back and forth and constantly losing things. So I feel like this is gonna be a very easy thing to teach. Again, that was load in, load out, and we're gonna to go to the next bin, prep. Okay, so next step for prep for 90 odd percent of residential interior repaints. We all know the drill. Um, again, exact list of what's in here, what stays in here, it's yellow. All things are tagged yellow. I'm also gonna introduce another thing. This is one of those general things that could pop up in almost any phase. This is our warm bin. In Vermont, it's a tundra for half the year and you can't leave anything uh, in the van overnight or even for a few hours oftentimes. So I have a thing that's either always living in my house or in job sites. It has things like my simple green, you know, something like this, caulking, things you're gonna need for different phases, filler, and tape. Guess what? Tape's adhesive left out in the cold and freeze-thaw cycles will detract from its usefulness. It can affect the edge locked, the edge lock on the lines, and it can also affect um, just how it tears. It can start to do that really annoying splintery thing. So I do try to keep tape warm. This is the warm bin. Back to prep. Oftentimes you're setting up a tower light, but a lot of the time you're doing rounds and really trying to look at stuff closely and move quickly. I love this little Bosch light. I'm in the Bosch system with my drills and drivers already. I have a lot of the batteries. So this was an easy thing for me to pick up. And because uh, those batteries go kind of quickly, I keep, again, yellow, remember, only prep. I keep this in here so that you're not chasing batteries around the job site. Okay, what are you doing next? Say you're working in a scuzzy bathroom, some walls are trimmed next to the toilet's gross. You're gonna be cleaning it. So we're keeping sponge in here, simple green, again, all within mostly this, occasionally this. What else is included in prep? Probably caulking. Keep caulk on in there. You're gonna keep paper towels. You're gonna keep rubber gloves or nitrile gloves. Um, is that sometimes people like to caulk with that? That's fine. You're also gonna keep a little bit of safety gear, respirator, and some earphones because sometimes in the prep phase, you are running the festools on the walls. And then lastly, if it's a really simple, uh, not a ton of patching, and you just wanna run over it with a sanding block or a little bit of this sandpaper, we keep some of that in there as well, as well as some scouring pads in case they need to be a little bit of a deeper clean. Um, and that just reminded me of a section, items stored in van related to this phase. And you can see I have my festivals there. That's just saying, think about the other things, think about the other tools that are related to the prep phase. They don't always come in, but they're there, they are part of this phase. So this is prep. Okay, sometimes part of prep is some more invasive wall repair. Sometimes you're doing seams, sometimes you're doing holes. This is the bin that gets us ready for that. As you can see, this is all the stuff that always lives in the bin. And this is stuff like uh, I, I store my mud in giant protein powder containers. So that's not always necessary that lives in the van as do my space heaters, because that can also be really useful for curing mud a little faster so you can turn around the job quicker. So this one's pretty simple, but knives. I do bring in some really quick hot mud in case I just got to turn a little small thing around very quickly. Keep that in there. 
This is kind of new to me. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay in the system. I like the concept. I'm not sure I like the cleaning, but it's in here for now. Speaking of cleaning, I like to keep the cleaning item with the thing itself, right? So this is my mud pan. I do a lot of my mixing in here. I like to be able to go over here, clean it all out. This is awesome, awesome little brush to get in all the corners and not have to go searching elsewhere for any part of the, te the task. This is for the Mud and More Mix Ball. Again, not really sure that's gonna have staying power, but I'm gonna take it through a few more reps. Tapes. In case I'm doing a really quick just scuff on the wall and I don't wanna lug the festival in, I'm not really taking off too much. A Little bit of dust in the air is not gonna matter. I like to hook this up to my extension pole. Um, and what else? In case you don't have time or don't really feel like you need to really, really stabilize a patch with actual sheetrock and you just want to patch over a light fixture on a ceiling where it's never going to catch an impact, I like to have some of these on hand. Last but not least, sometimes we all know those super, those walls that are the exact color of dried mud. Sometimes you want to tint it a little bit just so that it's easier and you don't get to that painting phase and realize you forgot to sand one spot. It's a super annoying thing to happen. So sometimes it's worth it to dye your mud. Sometimes it's also worth it, same thing, to dye stuff like that. Um, it just helps you see everything. Before I discovered this trick, if the walls were really white or, or kind of off-white, um, I would actually put a piece of tape on every patch just so that I didn't have to think, I didn't have to search on that sanding step. I just came around and just knocked them all off and followed the tape. So that is the sheetrock bin. And yeah, that's it. I do most of my sanding for finished sanding with Festools. Um, but that's something that if they're going to be in for that, they're, they're just already in. So that's the green bin. Okay, last step of your average residential repaint, you're cutting and rolling. So this is the application bin that has all of the smaller stuff that you'll need for that step. Big rolling pans, extension poles, they'll stay in the van until they're necessary, but oftentimes you might have an extension pole in for part of the prep if you're pole sanding or something like that. Um, so this is everything else. Starting with rolling cages. I'm a huge fan of 14s. Um, I think 14s have almost made nines obsolete. So I have two 14s and a nine and then a little whizzy handle in case I want it. This extension pole lives in here for hallways or really small narrow areas where any sort of longer one is going to dent the wall behind you or hit the wall that you just rolled. So I want to avoid that. This is a good way to just get a little bit more leverage um, and also fit it in here. For cutting, I'm a huge fan of these handy buckets. I just like them, they carry a lot of paint. I like the neatness of them. I always have a lot of different inserts in there and I save these. These things will go for miles, a lot of different jobs. So don't be wasteful about those. What else is in here? Covered bags, these things are really sweet. Um, they don't sell them in a lot of paint stores I've found. I don't know why, they're like 10 bucks. They are super useful. What you do with it, you open that up. You put your rolling pan in it. You don't have to wrap your roller. You just kind of get it wet, throw it in here. You know, you're taking, you're taking a lunch break. You're walking away for 10 minutes. You don't want it to dry. This actually lasts all weekend too. Say for whatever reason, first, first coat happens end of the day on Friday, second coat first thing on Monday, it will last. You do not have to have this or you do not have to wrap it or anything. So if you think about how much time you spend uh, if you don't finish a rolling job, breaking it down, setting it up. That's, that, that could be a half hour a day. So for 10 bucks, I carry three of them. This isn't my comprehensive spray kit, but I do just keep a couple of things in here that could be used for spraying. Monkey suits, dirty hats, filters. I keep other odds and ends too, like bucket hooks. Occasionally I'm bringing an, ex ex an extension ladder into a, a high ceilinged interior. You're gonna want something like that. Stir sticks, every little thing you might want to open or close a can, mix, pour, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna notice I don't have brushes in here. We're going back to the Purdy backpack for that. When I said this is kind of an all phase little thing, back pocket has masking. 
Most of my masking lives in the van in a big shelf, um, but I have a nice little assembly in here. This side, putty knives. They're so useful. We're using them for a bunch of different things. They would just get lost in these bins. This has perfect pockets for them, as well as brushes. And then all the weird little tools. You know, I don't need a Baco scraper on, <laughs> on most jobs, but it's nice to just have it in here when I do. How often do these save your life? I don't know, once every five jobs, but it's nice to have them in your miscellaneous tool bin. And then these are the things that, you know, I'm grabbing for a lot. Five and one, an extra razor knife that is barely hanging on there. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, extra Sharpie and, oh my God. You guys have one of these? You ever drop a super invaluable screw behind a vanity on a Friday at four o'clock and you get to fish it out with this and be a hero even though no one's watching? Yeah, get one of these. So that is what's in the Purdy backpack as well as the application bin. Um, I don't do a ton of interior residential spray work. I have a different tote for tips and all the spray accessories that I'm not gonna show just cause uh, it's not my bread and butter. So that's application. Okay, and the last part of the system is inventory for disposables. This is a big deal too, or potentially a big one. There are certain items that if we do not have them on the job site, it can stop our day. It can mean a trip here, there, depending on where you're working relative to the store, that can be an hour back and forth. It's just a waste of time. It interrupts the flow. So we're gonna to want to avoid work stoppages due to inventory uh, shortages as much as possible. And ideally, we will never get down to zero uh, on anything. And the way we've chosen to do that, to create a system to do that, is back of each bin lid has the disposables for that phase, right? So bucket inserts, pan inserts, roller covers. These are things that you could either have a work stoppage or just be inconvenience if you don't have it. The number in parentheses there is the number that triggers a reorder, okay? So if we're down to three roller covers total, we need to reorder. Hopefully we shouldn't even get down to three because you can go through three in a day on a certain job sites. If an employee notices that there are three or less, they are responsible for coming over to this master sheet, finding the application box, checking roller covers. Here we have another thing, V. V stands for van. These are things where there is extra, there are extra in the van. If they need it that moment, they can run out to the van and get it. If not, their only job is to stop work, find this, it's always gonna be around, and check it. At the end of the day, if the employee hasn't gone out to the van already to go get the thing or check on inventory, it is their responsibility to go out and verify. If there are tons in the van, they reload this bin, great. Everyone's happy. If not, the final step they're responsible for is going to a Google Drive master spreadsheet that pretty much looks like this, flagging that as we need it. That will create an automatic notification to management someone. And then that is that has triggered an order, a reorder. So that is how we're gonna manage inventory. And we wanna make it a really simple process that will always have compliance. You know, we don't want people to be having to do too much, find their phone, whip it out, this and that. Uh, we want dry erase, check, go back to it, end of the day, reconcile. And we always wanna be aware of this before it becomes a problem. Okay, so that is the organizational system based on four totes. As you can see, they also stack really well, so that's nice. You're breaking down uh, a job site at night, you're gonna leave it for the clients over the weekend. People like seeing this. It also stacks in the van really well. It's a really, it's just organizationally wonderful on all fronts. Um, as you can see, I've enjoyed nerding out about this stuff. Uh, a couple other added benefits to doing something like this. What if business starts going great and you wanna run two separate interior crews? It's really easy to just double all of this. This is all very easily accessible stuff. None of these tools are super specialized, so you can clone it. It also helps, what if, what if something gets stolen? What if somebody runs off with a couple of the bins? Clone them. You can Amazon three quarters of this stuff to your doorstep in two or three days if it's not the holidays and COVID, and then the rest is at Lowe's or Sherwin. So really versatile. Um, and just again, think about 
onboarding an employee, they have so much to learn and they're going to be confused. Let's make one thing simple for you, everyone else, and your clients. Um, so yeah, please leave comments, feedback, tag me in your organizational job site or van videos. I love seeing that sort of stuff. And yeah, I appreciate you watching. And again, I'm Noah Cantor, and this is Advice from a Young Tradesman TV.